Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlocked. Here we go, Mark here with you beauties. After a brief hiatus, we're back for a little bit of domestic power rankings. We might not have LEC action yet, but we're less than a week away. We've got some roster changes so we can even slip in a little preseason rankings over in EU. It's a little bit of that mixture, right? The way too early power rankings. Although this is not way too early. Just it's a little early. early. Yeah. Just a brief bit ahead of the schedule for the LEC, but time to check in with them. Get a baseline set from the winter split heading into the spring split in that region. Continuing on our spring split rankings for the LCS and LCK. And we start in North America, the penultimate week of regular season action and... Right when you look towards the bottom of this table, this is something we've talked about. Now you've heard players talk about it and casters as well. Even though a squad like Immortals sitting at the bottom of the table, it feels like, and obviously this has got to be a direct result of going down from 10 teams to 8, even the bottom squads are better and more competitive than they have been in years past. It was good to hear a little bit of, a, you know, kind of pro confirmation about that is how they're viewing the situation around the league and where it is and where the power lies and just how much of a, j a gap there is between bottom all the way to number one. That's one of the important things to understand about the LCS. When you do look at teams like Immortals, like Shopify Rebellion occupying these two bottom slots, sure, not an extreme amount of, uh, you know, the success can't compare to the other teams that we have seen so far this split in the LCS. Make no mistake that they have been lethal enough given the day, getting the right composition, whatever it is, that they've been able to take down one of these top LCS teams. Yeah, and I think it was Jojo Piet talking about even Immortals, you still have to be focused, do your homework. You can't just show in, kind of go through the motions because they will beat you if you show up and you have a dud of a day. So even Immortals, Shopify uh, at the bottom. Dig had a head-to-head -head win against some of those bottom squads. And Dig has been the most competitive out of those bottom three squads. And honestly, I would even accept an argument putting them ahead of Team Liquid. Yeah, I think that at some point, you know, early in the split, I think a lot of the reviews about the uh, experiment that was going on with Dignitas and with the roster and the transactions that they made to bring players in, a lot of people had those questions, had their doubts, and I think a lot of those people saw some of those doubts in the early games out of the year from Dignitas, but as time has gone on, as the LCS teams have kind of sorted themselves out into more of an order, Dignitas has established themselves as not that bottom team, not that bottom level, that they are going to be someone that is looking to build together, put together good weeks to be in that playoff position. And XU, as a young, up-and-coming uh, domestic talent, is going to be a guy who hopefully is going to be getting some phone calls as his career progresses because he definitely has showed up in a big way as a rookie on a team with somewhat low expectations. Uh, top four in the LCS, NRG. I mean, they pick up a couple of wins. It is anything but clean from them. But hey, let's be honest. When they won the summer split last year, most of their wins weren't clean. It, it's a survival mode is what you're seeing from this NRG team as, you know, certain things maybe aren't in sync, don't have the right, you know, uh, synergy and chemistry going right for them and the communication and the calls for this team. Because I think a lot of the execution, a lot of the skill of these players, it's still there. I don't have any question about that disappearing over the course of a year. It's about getting on the right page together. That's going to be the thing for this NRG team. And whether they get in sync in time for playoffs is going to be the big one. And what the champion pool for this team is looking like you know we're seeing vain top out of dokla he's had the spiciest stuff you know contracts every now and then is more than willing to pill pull off something you know ivern's not super off meta but it's not the absolute powerhouse picks in the jungle so i think this is the team that people fell in love with in the summer split because they were picking things a little off meta and their play style was so different than other NA squads. They're slowly refinding that mojo. Man, I think players like Palafox, who he down in the bottom laner as well, two guys that you can identify that have open champion pools that should be looking to experiment, find that type of pick that is going to be that power that pushes NRG into that overdrive mode so they can be one of the top teams in the LCS. Ahead of them... 100 Thieves, if you watched 
JoJo and Inspired on these post-game shows, they were both saying these guys are frauds. They're lucky to have such a good record. And if they matched up against them in the first round of playoffs, they would be happy singing praises. Little disrespectful to 100T. I get a little bit uh, where they're coming from. They both, by the way, had praise for River and Quid. But the matchup uh, this week, you know, they struggled a little bit in their first match. They did pick up a win and then obviously ended up dropping in that second game. But there's still lots of room for improvement for 100 Thieves. They're going to learn a lot in these summer playoffs or these spring playoffs. I'm not expecting a huge deep run, but come summer, I feel like this team's going to be fully leveled up and online. This is one of those squads where you can now kind of look in the picture and, of course, you know, fingers crossed, everything understanding in this last week will be one of the playoff teams that you're going to have in the LCS. And that is quite a journey for where we, you know, whatever expectations would have been for this 100 Thieves roster to say that they're going to have pretty much last week a locked up spot for playoffs is pretty darn good for them and what they've done. And then, of course, you're looking at what you can do in those playoffs. Can you create that noise? Can you get on a hot run and build that experience for this lineup? It's going to be the biggest things. Players like Quid, General Sniper in the top side, of course, that's the big one. Having a player like River, who has been around in the LCS the last couple of years, of course, a longer career than that, a little bit of that veteran status. This has been a good mix for this 100 Thieves roster. And despite a worse record despite an incredibly suspect win against Team Liquid. It's now three out of four wins for Cloud9, and because they had such a dominant showing against FlyQuest in their first match of the week, it's enough for them to climb back into top two. They're not taking that throne from FlyQuest yet, but they look like they're slowly gearing up for some playoff form. You're seeing enough of these results. You're seeing enough positive performance and actions in these games from Cloud9 that you can give them that benefit. You can give them the credit that they are starting to build up and regain your faith in what they can do. Sideways be. thumbs up. Yeah, we're not fully in the big thumbs up just yet, but we're getting there for this squad. Performances, JoJo Pyeon making big pop-off plays, those type of things, all what you want to be seeing if you're one of these Cloud9 faithful this is going to be about them building up to that dominant form, being that strong hand heading into the LCS playoffs. Their performance against FlyQuest, where they dismantled them in that head-to-head, -head, that's got to be one of the big ones that you're looking for in their favor. And the biggest question for FlyQuest heading towards playoffs is going to be that young bottom lane because we've seen Whippo obliterate matchups. Jensen was incredible this weekend. Inspired is playing all types, whether it's a support or carry in the jungle and looking great. It's just that bot lane that we're waiting uh, to really be unleashed. But as you've heard pros across the board say, 80 carry is kind of irrelevant anyways, unless you're playing Senna. It's the way it seems to be. If you can't build up all those stacks like Senna, provide the advantages. And of course, the way that you can manipulate Senna, of course, with the farm, that's got to be one of the big ways you get ahead in the meta right now. If you're looking at this picture for the LCS as we look at the very top of it, you got to be feeling like these are the two that are going to be those top runners in the playoffs. What you've seen, what you can rely on them in a best of situation at this point. And, you know, overall the power level's been... Okay, the bottom's raised up, but it feels like the top has been pushed down a little bit. It's a whole lot more condensed for the LCS, which should just make for an even more exciting playoff run in spring. LCK side of power rankings feels like the bottom three is even more cut and dry than it has been even the ordering because you had DRX they get a head-to-head -head win against Nongshim and obviously the bros with the incredible recently 2-0 run against the Kwangdong Freaks is enough for them to ascend all the way to eighth and it's immediately halted by T1 is the progress for yeah. the bros is what you got to keep track of. It is a very set order at the very least right now in the bottom three of the LCK. I think there were more hopes that you would see a bit more life out of a team like DRX. Maybe you would see the bros taking one more step forward into that competition for these playoff spots. Not necessarily what type of action we've seen from the bottom of the LCK. Even when you have a Fear X squad rocking a seven-game losing streak, still sitting in that number seven spot, a lot of that because, as we've mentioned, they're in this insane gauntlet of schedule against only top LCK teams, and they've had some competitive moments. 
I, I, I need to find out who through the off season from Fear X didn't hold the elevator door open for the riot exec doing the scheduling because that had to be <laughs> what it was to make someone that upset that they got the schedule, the gauntlet from hell in the LCK going up only against top level squads. Gen G, T1, Han will life throw them in there. D plus Kia just keep rolling it on in those top teams in the LCK for Fear X. It's been a rough run. As you've said, we have seen life. We've seen pushback from them. It's so hard when this is the type of competition that you're going up against, and it is that consecutive back-to-back-to-back-to-back of these losses. And it helps that they're surrounded, not just below them by teams slumping, but the 5-6 spot, both KT Rolster and the Kwangdong Freaks. We alluded to that 0-2 run against the Bros. They dropped the game to Nongshim when they did pick up a win, uh, did Kwangdong, and then KT in the midst of a four-game losing streak. It's... It's the, it's a full slump, almost the bottom six of the LCK. And that's the, the wildest thing is you can bring up Fear X and you can understand that type of loss streak because of the strength of the schedule. That's not the same when you flip the page over to teams like KT and looking to see what they can do. Four game losing streak, right? That slide that we have been on track with them issued this out last time. Players like BDD need to step up, need to have more contribution, need to be at a more lethal level for this team to be successful. I think we've seen, you know, sparkles of it from the bottom lane duo of Death and Barrel. Obviously not enough to make anything change. And I think Piosic has definitely been zeroed in on a lot of players, you know, a lot of teams maybe didn't have the full videos or didn't want to go through the LCS stuff to prepare against him in the LCK. Well, now they've got the LCK matches and I think they've zeroed in on what they got to do against him. It's got to be a, a point to pivot for KT if you're going to find success again this spring split. And they've completely swapped trajectories now with D plus Kia. This is where the board transitions to the positive side of things. A two and five start for D plus. And we were legitimately concerned about this squad for spring. But now they have rallied off five straight series victories, whether it's Tank, Azir, Karma mid for Showmaker, Lucid coming up with some clutch plays and aiming, being a featured guy on a pick like Smolder. Things are looking good again over on D+. I gotta say, D+, Dad, one of the teams that has benefited from Smolder's introduction and the LCK and, and how he's been utilized, gotta be looking at them. And of course, aiming as the player because what was going wrong in that 2-5 stretch for D+, Kia? Well, part of it was aiming in the bottom lane not popping off not being that guy that we know that he can be and where he was at the success of kt roaster last year starting to see it now especially this pick smolder really starting that ball rolling for d plus kia already talked about the picks that showmakers taking i think the big one of course is tracking lucid's progression in the L in the lck not obviously then you know we want it all to be crazy and wild and impressed like a replacement from canyon would be in your mind it hasn't quite been, been that, of course. And I think it's understanding the, the expectations of bringing back down to where they should be situation for him. But he has been a lot better these past couple of weeks and making some crucial plays for this D-plus Kia lineup. And the important thing is just having a long leash for a rookie making his debut on, let's face it, what is now an iconic organization place replacing the most iconic guy uh, in that role, maybe in the whole LCK. So give Lucid a little bit more time. He's coming online. The top three has never been more set in stone now uh, than it is in the LCK with Hanwha, G, and T1. And listen, you drop Hanwha Life in the LCS or the LEC, they're favorites to win the split. The problem is there's a T1 and Gen G ahead of them in the LCK. There's always a bigger fish is the way that it is for a squad like Hanwha Life. You can climb yourself out of the rest of the pack of the LCK to emerge as that top other option. The problem is, well, the top is operated by two teams. And those two teams are T1 and Gen G. Even, uh, you know, with how things have gone, this whole split, you got to be looking at it. T1, of course, only loss to Gen G at the very beginning of the time and how they've been rolling on through a uh, fantastic run from them, even having a situation where owners got to be subbed out for health, bring in Guwan. My man looks like the best Viego in the LCK all of a sudden with four members of the T1 World Championship lineup around him. Hanwha Life, though, they have been good enough to separate her out from the rest of the LCK and say that we are going to be, from the rest of this pack, 
We're going to be the team that challenges that established top order of Gen G, those back to back to back champions, and T1, the defending world champions. And those are the only squads. Han was dropped to Series 2. They get revenge or a rematch against Gen G to open things up this week. So maybe there's a chance for them to shape up, uh, shake up some of these global power rankings ahead of that matchup. LEC! We're this weekend kicking things off. The spring split going to be in full swing to slowly catch up with all these other major regions. So time for a little bit of preseason rankings. And obviously, a couple of squads made a little bit of roster shakeups. It's combined with how you feel post-playoffs for the LEC. But the bottom, even with Rogue making a little change, Finn returning home to replace Shigenda not confident that's enough to make this team proactive enough to climb them out of the bottom. My confidence in Rogue is so drastically shaken that even being someone that is extremely excited and all for Finn coming back to the LEC, tracking through how hard he's been working since he's been away from that starting spot lineup, what he's been doing, you know, in through solo queue in Korea, all these type of things. Big fan of bringing Finn back and what he's going to be possibly doing. I can't have the confidence in this rogue team at this type of point without seeing games to make that one for them. So unfortunately, preseason ranking, they're finding themselves down at the bottom pit. But the next one up, I don't think I have the confidence in the move that they have made. Is Carmine Corp getting rid of Yamato Cannon? That was not the choice. I think you, myself, or a lot of the others out there would be picking to try and turn things around or what went wrong in that first split for Carmichael. Yeah, I don't think many people were looking at how that split played out and said, yeah, it's the draft. It's the coaching that's the issue for K-Corp. So unless there's a team synergy, maybe they had a full team meeting. They went out in the woods together in the off season to truly bond and we'll see them connected as one. I, I don't see them turning things around. And unless they went into those woods and they found 2018, 2019 upset back there, that that would make a difference. That's where he's been the, hiding. Damn. They can't find him back there. This is going to be uh, more or less looking like another rough split. Not the, the type of faith in these changes are going to be bringing for Carmine Corp. The other, the bigger roster changes. We heard about Trimby coming in for Kaiser earlier in the offseason, bring another vocal guy onto Team Heretics, even though Kaiser was pretty good at times in winter. And then, of course, the kind of earth-shattering news that Perks is going to be benched for the Academy guy in Zwiru and not even fully performance-based, even though statistically and eye test-wise, Perks was near the bottom of the barrel in the LEC. He got into it with one of the managers of Team Heretics, which I guess didn't rub him the right way. And all of a sudden, we got perks potentially in an ERL. But with Zwiru and uh, Trippy coming in, are you feeling better about Heretics? Can they be a top five team? I do feel better. I do feel better about this Heretics team, and that's mostly because I'm a fanboy for, for our boy Trimby down in the bottom lane. I really believe that he's going to have more of a positive effect, not, not, not necessarily against anything that Kaiser was offering for the team or what was available for him to try and make a change. I think Trimby is going to be a better option there. The question for Perks, now when you're looking at him in this whole situation, it's understanding that number one, as a player, He's not delivering to the highest of levels, and that type of high level was what enabled him to have the personality and attitude and, and you know, kind of carry himself around these organizations. And for an organization like the Heretics, this type of one, the equation didn't work out. You're not performing at that high enough a level that it will excuse or mask or, you know, change whatever type of perception about that attitude or conversation type of thing. And that's all without knowing what exactly went down but I can promise you, Perks is popping off. Perks is playing great. Perks is the Perks that we know and has sold his name as. You're not looking at this type of situation for the Heretics. He's probably getting away with saying a lot more if he's playing at an MVP level, 100%. Uh, BDS, a couple of spots up. Obviously, they bowed out in a competitive five-game set against Mad Lions. And is Adam playing? Is Gen X playing? I mean, that's the big question mark. But even with Gen X on the roster... They still looked pretty good, and the other four members proved that they're more than up to the task. Yeah, this is a BDS that does get that knockdown due to that uncertainty around what is going to happen. And, of course, even just future uncertainty of, well, what happens if we get all the way into week five and Adam decides he's going to be a bad apple again? 
And then we're trying to do deal with disciplinary stuff situation at that point. So there's still those questions hanging around, that dark cloud for BDS and Adam in that top lane. But we've seen sunshine. We've seen flowers grow from the rain of last year throughout Worlds. And that failure, you see the strength that these players have made. You saw that throughout the LEC playoff run here uh, in the winter split. Important to keep that momentum, keep that faith for the BDS fans, for their players. And faith is what you need for the rest of that top three here as well. Fnatic, they lost to Mad Lions Koi, but you feel like if you start the slate clean, a brand new season. They are still a stronger squad than Mad Lions Koi, but that playoff experience for the rookies and El Uoya, this is going to be a team to absolutely be reckoned with in spring. It's the question of what is going to be the one that brings the most, the, you know, blooms the first for this one between the Mad Lions Koi and Fnatic. Fnatic, for me, it's about that bottom lane. When does that bottom lane fully come online, fully starts to contribute and be something you gotta respect as a lethal option? Somewhere maybe we gotta divert resources to setting behind or, or keeping in a certain situation, which will open things up for Humanoid, for Razork, the way that those two have been playing early throughout that winter split. Good signs for Fnatic. We saw how bad things were last year when they didn't start out in this type of way. And I think Oscar has also shown some growth potential in himself as how he has solidified in that top side at times for this team. That's going to be something to keep track of for Fnatic and their progression. Weighed against those Mad Lions Koi young players and the experience that they gained and confidence in their selves and their abilities to play and contribute at this type of level alongside El Yoya and his leadership. That is going to be one of the tightest races in the LEC throughout this spring split is keeping track of those two's progression. And it was case in point in their series. Fnatic was one moment of turning their brains off. Terrible macro decision away from probably winning that series. And who knows, maybe advancing all the way uh, to the finals to match up against G2. But hype up all nine of these teams as much as you want. It's still G2's world and we are just living in it. Another split under their belt, another title. And yes, again, they will be the big favorites as we turn the calendars into the spring split for this year in EU. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people as always thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you on that flippity flip